Okay, gentlemen, let's look at some factoring with polynomials. So just like with radicals, where we factor the number in the radical, or the radicand, into its prime factors, those are numbers that get me, prime numbers, that get me to the number in the radical, x's, variables, and, and regular integers. So we do the same thing here with polynomials, except instead of it being numbers that get me to a larger number with x's and y's, it's binomials or trinomials, but in this case, mostly binomials. So kind of the same idea, except it's kind of new because we're not used to seeing this kind of prime factors. Okay, Always look to take out a greatest common factor, a GCF. This helps us make the problem easier to solve, especially when the numbers or the polynomial gets too large to solve. That is very important. It gets two stars. Very important. It'll help us to always simplify completely, which is our goal. Okay. Two rules for now. If there are two terms with a minus sign, we're going to use dots, which we call difference of two squares. Now, they don't have to be perfect squares, but they usually are. Just like when we saw conjugates, when it's two terms and a, or in a, in a binomial, and then we times it by the same thing with a different sign, we get two terms with a minus sign in the middle. That's basically what we're doing in reverse. So they're usually perfect squares, but we saw with radicals, they can be radicals. With three terms, we look for the coefficient of the first term called the a term. It's got to be one in this case. We learn how to do it differently later, but for now, if it's just one, I call it trinomial factoring. And we want two numbers that multiply to c, otherwise known as the last term, and add to b which is the coefficient of x, the coefficient of x, or the middle term. Okay, let's start with some examples. So we see to start, x squared minus 4. First thing we ask, is there a greatest common factor? Every single time we ask that. Well, I got x squared and I got 4. Nothing in common. No. Then, how many terms are there? Well, there's two. So that means I'm probably going to do dots. Let's check. We don't really have to check too much here. These are kind of basic to start, but there are two terms, and they're both perfect squares, as they usually are. So we need to write two sets of parentheses. Is there a minus sign? Sorry, is there a minus sign? Yes, there is. If there's a plus sign, it does not work. We can't really factor something with a plus sign. It's got to be a minus sign. Just like conjugates, we always get a minus sign in our denominator when we were doing conjugates. Same idea. So how do we undo? How do we undo uh, or, or factor this two-term polynomial? Well, it has two. It has a minus sign. It has two terms. We want to do the opposite of conjugates, which was multiplying it by itself. We want to square root it. So I got two sets of parentheses, and it's the opposite of conjugates. So it's what is the square root of x squared? X and x. What's the square root of four? Two and two. One's plus, one's minus. Those are conjugates. Just like we saw the other day in the other async number 19, I think. These are conjugates. So if it's perfect squares, you just look at is the four perfect square, is the x squared a perfect square, and it is, it comes out nice. If not, you're doing the same thing. It's got to be conjugates. One's plus, one's minus. It's the square root of the first term, written twice. Square root of the second term, the 4, written twice. Okay, let's look at the next one. x squared minus 9. Is there a greatest common factor? Again, I got x stuff, x squared, and then I got numbers, a 9, nothing in common. No. How many terms are there? Two. Terms are always separated by pluses and minuses. I think I'm going to do dots. Do I have a minus sign? Yes, I do. That's my little checklist I'm going to write every time. Again, just like conjugates, instead of timesing it by itself and we're squaring it, we're reversing that. So square root of x squared is x and x. Square root of 9 comes out nice. 3 and 3. One's plus, one's minus, because it's like conjugates. We saw with foiling, if it was x plus 3, x plus 3, I would get a middle term. I'd get a plus 6. 
if it were x minus 3, x minus 3, I would get a middle term, it'd be minus 6. But because 1's plus, 1's minus, they cancel. And I just get x times x, which is 9. 3 times 3, I'm sorry, which is x squared. 3 times 3, which is 9. So it's conjugates again. Next one. Is there a greatest common factor? Yes, there is. The first term, x to the third, and the second term, 16x, they both have an x. So I can take out an x from my binomial, and I'm left with x squared minus 16. Okay, so that was step one. Now we made the problem easier because we don't know how to do cubes yet. But I know how to do things squared as long as it's two terms. How many terms are left in parentheses? We took one out, so we kind of forego that we look just in the parentheses. There are two terms. I think to myself, can I do dots? Well, is there a minus sign? Yes, there is. Again, just like conjugates, the x is on the outside, and I got my double parentheses. Square root of x squared, x and x. Square root of 16, positive 4, negative 4. Just like conjugates, 1's plus, 1's minus. Okay, hopefully we're getting the hang of this. One more. Is there a greatest common factor? Mm, I thought so, but a 4x squared and a 25. They don't have any numbers in common, so no, they don't. This is not as easy as it was before, but same steps. How many terms are there? Two terms, 4x squared and a 25 separated by a minus sign, two terms. Same questions. Do I do dots? Is there a minus sign? Yes, there is. I think I can do dots. Well, let's check. Two sets of parentheses. I have to square root the, the first term. So 4x squared, x squared, we know that comes out as an x. 4, that's a perfect square. It comes out as a 2. So I have 2x as my first term, not just x as we've seen. The 25 is easy. Square root of that is 5 and 5. 1's plus, 1's minus. Again, these are conjugates. Okay, there you go. They're conjugates. Okay, looking at our second page now. Three terms now. Well, is there a greatest common factor? I have an x squared, a 3x, and then a 10. The first two terms have an x in there. The last one does not. So the greatest common factor is not in all three. The, la the second and third term have numbers, nothing in common, but the first doesn't really have a number outside of one, so I can't use anything in the first. Uh, any, any numbers to take out. So I'm up to here. How many terms? Oh, so there's no greatest common factor. How many terms are there? There are three terms. So I'm not going to do dots. That only works with two terms. I call it trinomial factoring. So... I need, as we saw up above, two numbers that multiply to my C term and two numbers, the same two numbers, that add to my B term, which is the coefficient of x. So two numbers that multiply to negative 10 and add to negative 3. That's what I'm looking for. Two numbers that M multiply to negative 10 and A add to negative 3. Thinking through my numbers that multiply, 10 and 1, 2 and 5. Oh, wait, 2 and 5 may work. If I had a negative 5 and a positive 2, that multiplies to give me negative 10, and that adds to give me negative 3. That looks like it'll work. How do I write my answer now that i found my numbers? Very simple. I have x squared. That's my first term. So I need two sets of parentheses. And I start with x and x. Why? Because when I FOIL, x times x gives me x squared. So it's got to be that because a is just 1. The number in front of x squared is just 1. And I have an x squared, so x times x. I have a negative 5 and a positive 2. A negative 5, positive 2. It does not matter if I write x plus 2 times x minus 5. It does not matter. Multiplication is commutative. Order does not matter. Okay, next one. Is there a greatest common factor? 2x squared plus 6x minus 20. Yes, I have, so yes, I have a 2 
in all three terms, 2x squared plus 6x minus 20. They're all even. I could take out a 2. Here's my 2. Parentheses. What's left? Well, x squared plus 3x minus 10. Now I look at what's in parentheses. How many terms are in parentheses? Whoops. Three. Three terms. Okay. So again, trinomial factoring. Two numbers that multiply to my last term. So my negative 10. And two numbers that add to my B term, which is my middle terms coefficient, number in front of the x, which is positive 3. It's the same as above, except it's a positive 3 now. So now negative 5 and 2 will not work because I need them to add to give me positive 3, not negative 3. So instead of negative 5, 2, I need 5, negative 2. Same two numbers, different signs. Again, I have x and x because i got to get x squared, which is my a value, which once I took out the 2 is 1. Right? x times x would give me x squared. And the 2 is out in front, tucked to the side. Now, I have my positive 5, my negative 2, positive 5, negative 2. Again, the or if I put the x plus 5 second and the x minus 2 first, same thing. Multiplication is commutative. Okay, next up, oh, the 2 has to stay out in front. The 2 has to stay out in front. If I had this equal to something, I could move it around, but I can't just make that 2 disappear. I take out a greatest common factor. It does not go away unless I have equals something. Then I can do stuff with it. But there's no reason for it to just disappear unless I have equals because then I can play with both sides. It's got to stay. Okay, third, next one, G. Is there a greatest common factor? I have x squared. I have an x. The last term has no x. I have a 5 and a 24. No numbers in common? No. How many terms are there? There are three terms. So I'm going to try to do my trinomial factoring. Again, I need two numbers that multiply to my last term, my 24. That's negative. And add to my b term, which is my x's coefficient, positive 5. So I start thinking of numbers that multiply to 24. 1 and 24 doesn't get me to 5. 2 and 12 will never add to get me 5. 3 and 8, that could get me 5. I need it to be positive 5, which means I need a positive 8 and a negative 3. Here's my positive 8, here's my negative 3. I erased that the wrong way. Positive 8, negative 3, we see x and x. Positive 8, negative 3. Again, the order of those do not matter. Does not matter. Next one. Is there a greatest common factor? No. I have x and x, and then a 12. Nothing in common in all three. How many terms are there? Three terms. I'm going to try to do trinomial factoring. I need... Two numbers that multiply to my last term, my negative 12, and add to my middle term, but there's no number in front of the x. That means it's a 1, or in this case, a negative 1. Right? Just like we've seen plenty of times before, an invisible coefficient really means a 1. So I go through my multiplication of 12. 1 and 12 won't add up to 1. 2 and 6 won't add up to 1. 4 and 3, that could get me 1. I want one of them to be negative, the larger one. So we see here, I get negative 4 and negative 3. Here's my negative 4, here's my positive 3. Sorry, negative 4, positive 3. I chose the numbers, I write them in the parentheses. Again, order does not matter. All right, only two more. Again, is there a greatest common factor? I will ask this question every time. I have x squared, 10x, and 16. No. No greatest common factor. How many terms are there? Three. I'm going to try for trinomial factoring. Again, I need two numbers that multiply to 16 and add to 10, both positive. So I think of my multiples of 16. 
1 and 16. Can't get me 10. 2 and 8. That could get me 10. I need them both to be positive. So, two sets of parentheses. An X and an X again. And I have a 2 and an 8, both positive. Those are the numbers I picked. These last three I erased in the wrong order, so my apologies for being slightly reversed, but we get the idea. Last one. Is there a greatest common factor? I have 2x squared minus 4x plus 30. Yes, there is. They're all even, so I can take out a 2. So let me do that. Here's my 2. Here's my parentheses. What's left? x squared minus 2x plus 15. Now I look at the parentheses. How many terms are there? Three terms. I took the two out. It's already out there. It's going to stay. Trinomial factoring. I need two numbers that multiply to my last term, my C, which is positive 15, and add to my middle term, which is my B, which is the coefficient of X, so negative 2. I go through the numbers in my head that add up to 15, or multiply to 15. 1 and 15 won't add up to give me negative 2. 3 and 5, that can get me to negative 2, except I need it to be a negative 5 and a positive 3 in order for me to get... Oh, this is wrong. That should be a minus 15. I apologize for this. This should be a minus 15. This should be a minus 30. I do not want to redo this video, so I'm just going to edit this. If this were a minus 15 and a minus 2, that's why negative 5 and positive 3 would work. Okay? So there's my answer there. The other one actually did not work. It's a good lesson there. It could not work. I could not get, I guess I'll go back to it. When I had it as positive, positive, there we go, positive 15 and negative 2, technically I there was no way for me to get there to be a negative 2 by addition. This works. But these don't multiply to give me 15. So technically for this one, without my correction I just made, this would just be that. I cannot factor it. There's no way I have two numbers that multiply to positive 15 and add to negative 2. It doesn't work out. That's why I changed it to a negative 30. Then it's a negative 15, and then it does work out. So that was kind of off the cuff, so good lesson there. Okay, you have uh, about eight or ten problems to do for classwork. Please complete those. Good luck.